How will Jupiter and Capricorn speak to you and your sign? Find out at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous Capricorn. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of December 2019, looking at life and love. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing month it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. Well, it is this sky that has so much promise and potential, but look, first I'm gonna get uh, something that I have to get out of the way, which is the full moon in the middle of the month. This full moon is happening in a daily part of your sky, a part of the sky that connects to uh, your work environment, the people who surround you there, the type of work you're doing, and it also speaks to your health as well. Now, this full moon is happening right around the 12th and it will be speaking with Neptune in a connection of tension. I would really advise you, if at all possible, not to do any kind of health-related testing around this time. The possibility of uh, mixed results or incorrect results are possible and they actually can be incorrect results that don't um, empower you. <laughs> That's the thing. So just be careful with that. Of course, if it shows up for you to do, you have to trust what it is uh, that shows up in your life and do what's in front of you to do. However, if it is that you do have a choice and if it's something elective, I would encourage you to do uh, any kind of health related tests a little bit earlier, perhaps a week earlier uh, into the month. And with this full moon having an emphasis on your daily life, including your workplace, you know, this could be a time when uh, it can feel as if a coworker uh, does leave. There might be some uh, uncertainty, a cloud of confusion around their leaving. The other way that this energy can be realized where it can feel as if a client, a customer, or a coworker is not being transparent as much as you would like. Perhaps it is that they're giving you incorrect information without realizing it. But sometimes what can happen here, of course, is that we get information that is intentionally meant to be misleading. So these are gonna be some things that you might have to be a little mindful of. I'm sorry to say, but this energy can be challenging for some people in its lack of clarity, in its confusion. Now, regardless of what happens, regardless of what comes or what feels like it wants to leave, no worries there. And why is that? Because of the very big news, and that is Jupiter moving into your sign right around the second of the month. Now, of course, there are Jupiter special horoscopes that are gonna be on YouTube, that are on my website, that are in the superstar space. So be on the lookout for all of that. Some of that is already up as this month begins. Having said that, putting that to the side, this is really, really amazing. And I know I have been mentioning this to you for a while. I've been saying you're about to start a brand new chapter, brand new chapter right around the corner. Well, we're here. This is you having moved around the corner and having arrived. And if it feels as you're starting this month and as Jupiter uh, enters your sign, if it feels as if, you know, wait, isn't this a new chapter? How come I'm not feeling the new chapter? Don't worry at all. We are gonna have moments of acceleration this month. And the most notable being the solar eclipse taking place towards the end of the month, right around Christmas day, actually is when we are going to have a powerful solar eclipse. Now, normally when the sun meets Jupiter in the sky, this is considered the luckiest day of the year. Astrologers like to consider it as such, but this is a solar eclipse meeting Jupiter in the sky. It takes that luck and adds that much more excitement and energy and possibility and electricity and surprise to the mix. Now with this happening in your sign, this really is a brand new beginning that shows up for you. For some, it's going to be more personal. For others, it's going to be more practical, but regardless, it is significant. Now, I have seen people go through incredible changes when they have eclipses in their sign and in their opposite sign. The opposite sign eclipse is coming up um, next month. So that is going to be once we get you into a brand new decade, we're gonna start the year, start the decade uh, in eclipse season, but it is the eclipse in your sign that kicks it all off right around Christmas day. So I have seen people go through incredible things. I have seen um, people who are vegan for over 10 years start eating meat again. 
I've seen a couple of people who ate meat become vegan at eclipses. I have seen a lot of people who had eclipses um, quit using drugs of different kinds. Um, I have seen people really make huge life transformations when they have eclipses in their sign. Now, you have had eclipses in your sign at this point over the course of the last year or so, and you are set to have another eclipse in the middle of 2020 before you're done for a few years of eclipses in your sign. But this is one of the most potent because it is happening hand in hand with Jupiter. It tells me that this really is a sense of your life uh, entering a brand new chapter and that it is expansive and that there is a lot of hope. Now it is a beginning, remember that, but it's a solar eclipse. It's gonna be an obvious beginning for you. Now, but regardless of what it is, look, for some it might be more subtle, like you hear of an opportunity, you realize you're meant to be somewhere or go somewhere. Uh, for others, it's going to be much more apparent. It's going to be the universe really saying, you are going there. You are going in a whole other direction now. Um, and that is part of the excitement of this time. And the key is with eclipses, you're not working with eclipses, okay? With eclipses, you want to stay open because it is in staying open and just sort of trusting your intuition, seeing where it is you end up going, that chances are the universe can deliver new opportunities to you that are better than anything you could imagine for yourself. So it really is a very, very exciting time. Regardless of your starting point, chances are that the universe is going to present you uh, with personal inspirations and practical changes that ultimately align you with a higher, more loving, vision for your life, perhaps something greater than anything you could imagine for yourself. Now, where it comes to matters of love, I do think there's such focus on self, but look, the first three weeks of the month, you have got Venus in your sign. That tends to be a very strong placement for attracting love and enjoying the love in your life. It makes it so that there's not a whole lot you need to do to go out there and make love happen. It just kind of shows up for you. But you add to this that Venus will, in the first part of the month, meet Saturn in the sky, in the middle of the month, meet Pluto in the sky. So there's a lot of very intense energy happening right around the mid uh, part of the month. And what that tells me is, on the one hand, a month of important reality checks, but also intensity and faded pulls and faded attractions. For those of you open to meeting someone new, Venus in your sign, one of the best times to feel as if you have options available to you where it comes to matters of love. Be mindful of the days around the full moon in particular. That is when Venus will meet Pluto in the sky and there could be a very strong draw to another person that lends itself to an important moment that serves as a catalyst in love. For those of you who are just starting to date somebody, uh, this month is very much about being honest about whether or not there is something here, whether or not you want to move forward with this person. And that can have an empowerment of its own. Regardless of what it is that does transpire, chances are you will be feeling pretty hopeful, pretty expansive, and pretty open to the possibility that there is plenty of options available to you in love, and that would be the correct instinct. For those of you in an established bond, well look, so much of the focus really is on you with Venus in your sign. And as a general principle, this can make it so that it feels like your partner is that much easier uh, with you and that much sweeter towards you as well. But given these uh, very important connections that Venus is going to have first with Saturn and then Pluto um, leading up to the middle of the month, well, it does suggest that uh, there are going to be at least a couple of moments there where it feels like you are looking at the love you have much more deeply. Again, reality check energy is what I'm seeing here. If it is that what you have feels strong, these are going to be moments of intensity of commitment. But if it is that what you have maybe needs more work to become stronger, well, what that work is is going to show up for you mid-month as part of navigating this time forward. What I love about this month for you, well, look, it's Jupiter, of course, moving through your sign. 
it is going to be mid-month that Jupiter will be speaking in supreme harmony with Uranus. Now, this is a very fortunate energy, especially with Jupiter in your sign. Uh, this really is new ideas, new beginnings abounding, including in love as well, but in all matters of joy uh, that are set to take place. The sweet spot for those days, though, is December 8, 9, and 10. If there's something important that you want to be planning, do it around those days because it is those days where chances are anything that you try, anything that you put out there has that little bit of an extra something to have it be truly something you can feel proud of. Well, thank you so much for watching. You can get a video like this every week by logging on to nadiashaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. It'll be a great month. Enjoy.